Hello, my name is Shoelace, and welcome to part two of the Poison Iceberg. This one's a little bit longer than the first part, so buckle up for... I don't know how much longer. It's three more entries than last time. But anyway, I'm a little bit sick as of recording the intro, and I might be sick throughout recording the rest of the video. So if I sound a little weird, that's why. But credit to Tungsten Oof and FTZ PLTC for making this iceberg. And of course, if you have a suggestion, just drop it in the Discord server because I'm not creative with video ideas. Anyway, sit back, relax, and enjoy my rambling. Saren is our first entry here, and it's an odorless and colorless liquid. It's thought to be 81 times more poisonous than hydrogen cyanide, which, correction there, hydrogen cyanide is not more powerful than cyanide. I messed up on that. Um, but back to what we were talking about. It was first discovered in 1938 by a group of scientists at the University IG Farben, or at least I think it's a university, I'm pretty sure it is and it's a man-made poison. In World War II, Nazi Germany produced 500 kilograms to 10 tons of sarin, somewhere around there, which I kind of feel like that's a big gap, but whatever. Sarin has been used for countless amounts of attacks from the early 1950s up to 2018, and the symptoms of having small amounts of sarin, like having it diluted in some water or having ingested or inhaled some vapor can cause a runny nose, watery eyes, small pinpoint pupils, eye pain, blurred vision, drooling, excessive sweating, cough, chest tightness, rapid breathing, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, increased urination, confusion, drowsiness, weakness, headache, slow or fast heart rate, and a low or high blood pressure, which is a lot for just diluted amounts um if you couldn't tell this layer is gonna be a little bit more dangerous with the poisons <sighs> tetrodotoxin is a neurotoxin which is a toxin that's harmful to the neurons in the brain it is found in certain animals like octopus or pufferfish which is why people say pufferfish is poisonous because as tetrodotoxin. Um, the first mention of tetrodotoxin was in 2838 to 2698 BC in a book called Pen Xiao Qing, or the Book of Herbs. I probably messed that up. It was used as a therapeutic. And the first recorded case of tetrodotoxin poisoning was in 1774 in a log by James Cook, describing how his crew fell after eating pufferfish. Symptoms of poisoning are numbness around the mouth, salivation, which is excessive production of saliva in the mouth, nausea, and vomiting. And then later on, this could lead to paralyzation, unconsciousness, lung failure, and maybe even death. VX is a nerve agent that appears as an odorless, tasteless, and oily liquid. It was first discovered in 1952 by Ranajit, I probably uh, messed that up really badly, Gosh, and J.F. Newman. In 1988, it was found that Cuba had deployed VX during Angolian insurgents during the Angolian Civil War. It's also been used in attacks in Japan, the Halava a chemical attack on the Kurds, and on King Jong Kim jong Nam half-brother of Kim Jong-un in Malaysia. VX is around 100,000 times more powerful than sarin. Breathing it in, drinking contaminated water, or eating contaminated food could cause abnormally low or high blood pressure, blurred vision, chest tightness, confusion, cough, diarrhea, drooling, and excessive sweating. Drowsiness, eye pain, headache, increased urination, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, rapid breathing, runny nose, slow or fast heart rate, small pinpoint pupils, watery eyes, and weakness. Having consumed large amounts of it, have all of the symptoms above, plus possible convulsions, loss of consciousness, paralysis, respiratory failure, and even death. Which, that is quite a lot. <laughs> Yikes. 
Zyklon B, or translated to English from German, Cyclone B, is a hydrogen cyanide-based pesticide. It was invented by Walter Hurt in 1922, and it was one of the main weapons used in concentration camps during the Holocaust, being used to kill around 1.1 million people, more or less. Rudolf Haas said that the use of Cyclone B to murder prisoners came about on the initiative of one of his subordinates, Karl Fritz, who had used it to murder some Russian POWs, or prisoners of war, in 1941. Because of its association with the Holocaust, it's used in memes made by white supremacists making fun of Jews. And of course, since it's based on hydrogen cyanide, it's just as powerful and has the exact same symptoms of hydrogen cyanide poisoning, which, shameless plug time, um, if you want the symptoms, go check the first video, I guess. Arsenic trioxide is an injection medicine that was first discovered to be medicinal in the 1970s by Zhang Tingdong. It's used to treat acute promilocytic, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, leukemia, or APL in newly diagnosed adults. Possible side effects are high blood sugar, extreme thirst, very often urination, extreme hunger, weakness, and blurred vision. If the high blood sugar is not treated, this could cause a diabetic ketoacidosis, or a condition that is basically a very serious and very complicated version of diabetes. A dry mouth, nausea, vomiting, shortness of breath, a fruity smelling breath, and a decreased level of consciousness. If the high blood sugar doesn't occur, then the other possible symptoms are excessive tiredness, dizziness, headaches, diarrhea, swelling in the arms, hands, feet, lower legs, or ankles, rashes, and itchiness. Serious side effects can be unusual bru bruising, unusual bleeding, bloody vomit or vomit that looks like coffee grounds, fecal matter that is black and tarry or contains bright red blood, decreased amounts of urination, and hives, which... I know I didn't get much information in there, but there wasn't much on the history, and, like, the only history really was that it's a medicine and it's discovered in the 1970s, so sorry that it's only symptoms. Antimony is a chemical element that appears as a silver metalloid. It is usually found in Earth's crust in a pure form, or it can be found in the minerals stibnite, silicone, tetrahedrite, and ulmanite. It was first used in prehistoric Egypt as an eye cosmetic. In the nowadays, antimony is mixed with other ores to make antimony alloys, which are in lead storage batteries, solder, sheet metal, pipe metal, bearings, castings, and pewter. Eye contact could irritate the eye, skin exposure can irritate the skin, cause redness and itchy rashes all over the skin, and inhalation can cause nose, throat, and lung irritation, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, headache, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Benzene is an organic chemical compound made of six carbon and six hydrogen atoms. It is found in volcanoes and forest fires. It was first discovered in 1825 by Michael Faraday, and it is used in plastic, resin, synthetic fibers, rubber lubricants, dyes, detergents, pesticides, glue, adhesives, cleaning products, and paint strippers. Exposure to benzene through the air could cause drowsiness, dizziness, rapid or irregular heartbeat, headaches, tremors, confusion, unconsciousness, and death. If you ingest benzene, it could cause drowsiness, dizziness, rapid or irregular heartbeat, headaches, tremors, confusion, unconsciousness, and death. Atropa belladonna is a toxic herbal plant in the same family as tomatoes, potatoes, and eggplants. It is found in parts of Europe, North Africa, and East Asia. It had been known since the first century, but was quote-unquote officially discovered in 1809 by an unknown person, which just means I couldn't find the person that found it. Women used to use it as a blush and also to make their eyes look bigger by dilating their pupils, which was a symptom of poisoning, but they didn't know that. It was done in the Middle Ages. It also used to be used as a medicine for things like pain, motion sickness, and menstrual issues. Consuming a tropa belladonna could cause meaningless speech, lack of coordination, tremors, shakiness, confusion, hallucinations, anxiety, agitation, aggressiveness, increased heart rate, enlarged pupils, well obviously, as mentioned just a few sentences ago, blurred vision, numbness, coma, and even death. Cadmium is a chemical element that is found on the Earth's crust in all kinds of soils and rocks. It appears as a soft, silvery white, divalent metal, and it was first discovered in 1870 by Friedrich 
F- Frederick Strohmeyer. I don't know how to say names. It was used in the 1840s as a pigment for yellow paints, and now it's usually used for stuff like batteries, solar cells, electroplating, silver soldering. Inhaling cadmium can cause a lot of symptoms, but the most common include an excess of blood in the vessels supplying the trachea and the bronchi, lung edema, which is a condition which is characterized by fluid piling in the tissue, blood coming out of a ruptured blood vessel in the alveolus, rapid reproduction of fibroblastic cells, enlargement of the alveolar lining cells, and blood clots blocking veins and arteries of small blood vessels. And consuming cadmium can cause nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps, pain, diarrhea, and tenesmus. I definitely said that wrong. Which is a condition that makes you feel like you need to use it the number two. Use the bathroom go number two when your bowels are empty. Also, I'm no longer sick, so, uh, yay. Radon is a radioactive chemical element that appears as an odorless, colorless, tasteless gas. It is found in radism 226, or radium. Radon was first discovered in 1900 by Frederick Ernst Adorn. Decayed radon makes radioactive polonium and alpha particles, which has made it useful for treatment of cancer and tumors. It is also used for tracking air masses, predicting earthquakes, migrating illnesses like arthritis, which migrating means to just help stop um, cancer treatment, cell damage treatment, and radiation therapy. Inhaling radon could cause shortness of breath, a cough, pain in the chest, tightness in the chest, hoarseness, difficulty swallowing, and lung cancer, which isn't it ironic that it's supposed to treat cancer and it causes cancer? Weird. Nicotine is a naturally produced alkaloid that lives in the nightshade family. Crude nicotine had been known since 1571, but was discovered like in its pure form in 1828, and the real molecular formation was actually discovered in 1843, so like 15 years later. It used to be used in an is- as an insecticide. I said that a little too fast. And now it is sometimes used as a stimulant or an anti-reducing drug. As a pharmaceutical drug, however, it is used to help relieve smoking withdrawal symptoms. If, in case you don't know, that is people who are trying to quit drugs are, um, they sometimes go through things called withdrawal where they want to have it, but they know they shouldn't. So it's that. Um, it is also the thing that makes tobacco drugs addicting. So, like, um, it's found in cigarettes, e-cigarettes, cigars, chewing tobacco, snuff, pipe tobacco, and tobacco plants. Ingesting nicotine could cause nausea, vomiting, increased levels of saliva production, abdominal pain, pale skin color, sweating, increased blood rate, increased heart rate, rapid and heavy breathing, the loss of full body movement, loss of balance, trouble walking, tremors, headaches, dizziness, and muscle, muscle twitching, muscle twitching, muscle twitching, and seizures. After around 30 minutes to four hours after these start happening, there could be added symptoms of diarrhea, low blood pressure, slow heart rate, unusual heart rhythm, shock, a coma, muscle weakness, paralysis, slow breathing, or shallow breathing, actually, trouble breathing, and respiratory failure. Vermilion is a pigment made from powdered cinnabar, and it was first recorded to be used in the 8,000s to 7,000s BC. In the Neolithic village of, holy crap, that's a name I cannot say, I'm gonna try it, and I'm gonna butcher it really badly, um, Katalhoyuk, um, it's up on the screen. It started being mined at around 500, 5300 BC in Spain, and it was used in the Yangshao culture in China around 5000 to 4000 BC for ceramics, wall, and floor paint, and also ritual ceremonies. Ancient Greeks used vermilion as decor on pieces of Greek art, and the Romans acquired cinnabar from the huge Spanish thing, huge Spanish mine, to use for drying oils, watercolor, egg tempera, which is a fast drying paint, and true fresco a durable paint used for murals and stuff. It was used as a cosmetic powder for Hindu women who called it Sindor, which I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not sure. I don't really check the pronunciation before I start recording. I probably should. It was used in both North and South America for ceramics, figurines, murals, and for decorating burial sites. In the Middle Ages, it was used as a paint for a vivid red in art pieces, being described as an alchemical made paint, according to alchemists at the time. 
In the 20th century, it was lowered in popularity with paints like cadmium red, which I'm pretty sure is made of cadmium, but you know, you can always check. Since cinnabar has the elemental mercury, it has the same symptoms of mercury poisoning, which, shameless plug, was in the last episode. And that is it for the iceberg, at least this tier. Um, sorry it took me a really long time to make this. Um, I was not feeling the greatest, and I didn't have too much motivation to work. But I pushed through. I gotta keep on that grind, and I, uh, finished the video. Yippee! Thank you for watching. Um, I'll see you next time, maybe? I don't know.